thanks for coming. It's very strange because it might seem that we booked you specifically because of this. It, you've been booked on the show for weeks. This is a coincidence, and you're a heart surgeon. The, the Daytime Emmy Awards were last night. Yeah. I was coming here anyway. We talked about dates. Today was the obvious one. This was planned months ago. In a way, you're responsible for what <laughs> happened to us. <laughs> you sound like my wife. I think, right? <laughs> See, my do people forget that you're a real heart surgeon and that you still it, do operations? It slips their mind sometimes, but every Thursday I'm dutifully in the operating room doing procedures. Actually, I train to do exactly the kind of operation that your son... Have you mentioned your son's name? I, in all Billy. The, Bill, in all the tears, I couldn't quite... Uh, Billy. By the way, it was just unbelievably emotional. And what you were just expressing there is why I practice medicine. There is something unique about the raw emotion, the authentic love that we have for each other, and we forget that sometimes. Yeah. It's never more powerful than when parents have children in trouble. And pediatric cardiac surgery, it's like being a fighter pilot. You, you, you either make it or you don't. And you got to get the plane off the aircraft carrier, and you got to do it with the child and the parents. So I know what Dr. Storrance, who's a superb, excellent surgeon, went through with you. Yeah, the, the way people were speaking of this man before this operation, it, we almost felt like we were lucky to be in this situation. Like, oh, he is, he, this, he is a god. I mean, he is an absolute... Miracle, and and I mean, it turned out to be true, but it definitely filled us with a lot of confidence. But I wonder what it's like to be in that situation where you actually have saved people's lives. Now you've done a lot of heart surgeries. Do pe how do people thank you for something like that? Well, first, if I can say something, if you take responsibility for saving life, then you have to take the blame for losing life. I see. And it's really hard to live through that. So I'm very careful when I, when I teach. I'm a professor at Columbia to make sure folks have you know, a little bit of. The equanimity about this. You got to keep your ego in check and you have to be confident enough because surgery is ultimately controlled arrogance. Right? We have to think we can open the chest of a child with a heart the size of a peanut and then fix the insides of it. Right? That does take a little arrogance. Yeah, well, yeah, sure. But, yeah. you got, but it's the controlled part that's important because when you overstep, you start doing crazy things. Uh, and people do express appreciation, but I'm always quick to say uh, that something that you did was as important as what I did. You had confidence in what was going on. You supported each other. The role of the family, which you brought up the family here, but the family at home as well, uh, it's unparalleled in its vitality. And the nursing that you touched on a little bit, these women... Absolutely. Spent a whole and men as well. And, and, yeah. and, and, and mm -hmm. there should be more men. But you know, my, my, my charge nurse at Columbia, uh, Flora, Flora Wang, she was actually, uh, the, the Chiang Kai-shek, who was the head of Taiwan, had come to the United States in the 60s. And his gift was to allow his charge nurse to stay with us. And this woman would look over my shoulder. She retired recently. And if, I, if, she, if it wasn't completely dry after the surgery, because we, we used blood thinners, she wouldn't let me close the chest. Otherwise, you got to go back and open it again and fix the problem. And it's that kind of leadership that nurses have given our nation. And that's why a lot of this works, especially in heart surgery, because it's a team sport. And especially because the nurses are there and they're at the hospital every single day and some of the doctors will come in and go and the nurses really, I mean, really, it is amazing that this woman noticed that. I mean, it, you know, so many people told me, you're very lucky she noticed, she noticed well, that. Well, let's talk about this. So, Tetralogy of Fallot was one of the, the conditions that, that really gave birth to heart surgery. It was discovered you know, hundreds of years ago, but probably 150 years ago, Fallot, who was a French uh, fellow, described it. But literally, he only described it, because eldest kids didn't make it, Jimmy. Right. In fact, until the 50s, when the first heart operation started to be done, almost at the time like an experiment to try to save these kids, we didn't have any chance of, of helping. Because the blood had shifted so far out of gear that when these kids turned blue, they could compensate for a while, but ultimately the body couldn't take it any longer. And the birth of technology and medicine, and certainly heart surgery, is directly tied to saving the lives of children like Billy. And it has become now one of the best examples I can think of of how technology has changed our lives for the better in America. It really is amazing what they do. It's something that... You, I, I just can't imagine being left to our own devices in a situation like that. And thank God we live in a, in a big city where it was available and we had insurance and yeah. people taking care of us. And um, it really, I mean, you, you, it, you hesitate to say you're lucky in a situation like this, but we absolutely were very, very lucky. So I brought you a little present. Oh. I thought it, it's always nice to have knowledge because knowledge is power. So okay. I want to show you a video All right. of, of a heart. And then show you and everybody else, you probably become the world expert in tetralogy of flow, what went down. Because if people really understand the, the depth of what needed to happen to save your son's life, 
I think it might change a lot of folks' minds about the things you talked about earlier, about funding research, but also encouraging people to go into medicine. It's a fantastic field. Yeah. It's a blessing to be in it. Is that okay? Absolutely. All right, so I've got, I've got a little video. I'm gonna put it up there. If it's on that big monitor, I can, there it is. I'll okay. Put it back there real quick. This is your heart? This is, uh, this is your heart, actually. Oh. All right, so uh, the blue is, uh, is the veins, and the red is coming from the clean blood. So the blue blood's coming from your legs, supposed to go to the lungs. See the blue line, the blue arrows? The yellow arrows with the red blood is clean blood from the lungs, going back up into the uh, aorta, which goes to your brain, kidneys, and everywhere else. This is normal. Notice this wall here, right? That wall's nice and thick and intact. That's all you have to focus on. That wall, if it's not there, lets the red and the blue mix like they're not supposed to. And that causes the redness uh, or the blueness that a child has. So you have a picture. Yes. This is an image of what Billy's heart looks like. So notice that wall is missing here. And there's a little white arrow that goes across into it. So when that wall is missing, that's because that muscle between the two main chambers is not formed. But because of that, these tubes, the, the blue tube takes dirty blood to the lungs, the red tube takes clean blood to your brain and everywhere else. They no longer can dis discriminate between what blood's coming into them, so the blue blood goes across the middle and gets into this red. Now, if you, you must have done this at home. If you take a little food dye and drop it into the toilet bowl, you know how it turns color? Yeah. Have a little, you know. I mean, I've never done it. Only a lunatic would do something like that, but. <laughs> What's going on in your house? <laughs> I can imagine it, though, yes, for sure. <laughs> well, people always call me friends who've had beets, for example, and they yeah. have two drops of beets go to the toilet, they think they're having, you know, a bloody stool. Sure, right? yeah. Because it turns everything that color. Well, same thing happens to blood in your body. You get a little bit of the, of the dirty blood mixing with the clean blood, and the baby turns blue. And so that very attentive nurse who identified the fact that that was happening to Billy again changed the course of his history, because now, instead of being discovered weeks later, and you're wondering what the heck's going on, why isn't he growing, the murmur together with that leads you along a path to a, a, a operation that was unimaginable when you and I were born. And today is becoming so commonplace that the procedures that your son will go through, I mean, cure's a strong word, but as, as the audience will meet Sean White, I mean, he should grow up completely normally with no limitations and give you a complete challenge in your life. We should torture you. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like that, subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest videos. And if you didn't, subscribe anyway. It's free. Who cares?